Well, howdy there, partners. Welcome to my channel. Another bibliophile shoots first. My name is Gregorio, and I am here to do the rootin' tootin' June on the range tag, created by Steve Donahue. There are ten prompts to this tag. Prompt number one, a way out west. Have you ever been to the American West? Yeah, I have, just a little. Um, in the early 2000s, my wife had a business conference in Dallas, Fort Worth. And um, I joined her on um, Friday afternoon as her conference was um, wrapping up. And we spent two nights, three nights down in Texas. We were also looking at property to buy down there. Um, at the time, the, the housing costs in Texas were, were really cheap. Like, like $250,000 could get you a pretty nice brand new home in Texas, in um, the suburbs of Fort Worth. We went to visit some properties, um, and uh, we were like, looking in uh, the bathroom, and they had one of these huge, ginormous walk-in showers, you know, big enough for four or five people, you know. And in the middle, on the drain, was a spider like that. It's a huge spider. You know, the real estate agent says, oh, just a spider. And your wife was freaking out and going, that's one big ass spider. You know, kind of spider you would see in a killer animal novel. But uh, we never bought it, and I'm glad we never did. I don't think I would have fit in in Texas culture very well. I've also been to um, San Francisco when I was in high school. A friend and I flew out. We spent some time in the Sierra Nevada mountains camping um, and living in his uh, family's cabin, a little cabin in the Sierra Nevada mountains. It was a lot of fun. So I have sort of been out west. Prompt number two, dry gulch. What's the smallest town you've ever visited? How small is your town right now? The smallest town that I have visited that I actually stayed in and spent more than a few nights in is probably Vinyl Haven, Maine, which is an island off the coast of Maine. I went there in high school. Um, we had um, some classes because I, I went to a very bizarre high school where we only had one class for three weeks. And we had an oceanography class, and uh, one of the teachers owned a house on Vinyl Haven, Maine. And so we went out there for three weeks. Now, the population as of 2018 says Vinyl Haven, Maine has 1,335. I think it was a bit smaller when I was in high school in the 80s. I'm not going to say how much smaller. I just think it was probably in the 900s, 800s, and maybe even smaller. I really don't remember. That's probably the smallest town that I've ever spent some time in. As for the current place that I live, which is on my driver's license listed Fredericksburg, Virginia, the population is um, 28,367 as of 2021. And I did move in 2021, so maybe I'm counting in that population. You know, it's not a it's not a small place, but it's it's not a large place either. Prompt number three, where the buffalo roam. Have you ever seen an American bison in person? Or what's the largest hoofed animal you have ever seen? Or do you have evidence that you live near coyotes? Um, I have not seen a bison in person. Um what is the largest hoofed animal you have ever seen? A giraffe. When I was in high school, I had a class um, in zoology, and we um, basically went to the National Zoo every day to, to study animals. And one day I was watching the giraffes, and the giraffes were in their pen, and you know, they have their long necks, and he was reaching over the, the little gulch that prevented him from getting out, and he was eating some grass. And there was this one lump of grass that he couldn't quite reach. He seemed see straining for it, and he couldn't get this grass. I pulled out the grass and held it out to the giraffe, and the giraffe took it from my hand. I know, feeding the giraffe 
It's probably a bozo no-no. But it was grass that he was eating anyway, so he just couldn't reach that batch of grass. Um, do you have evidence that you live near coyotes? Yes, we do live near coyotes here in Virginia. I hear them yipping in the, the trees behind me. And they have their, a very particular coyote yip. And I also lived near coyotes when I was living in um, Washington State. And you'd hear them yipping too. And that, it makes me very nervous that my cats would ever get out and become coyote food. Prompt number four. Old Doc Frey. What is your history with Westerns? Novels, TV, movies. Well, let's start with TV. The, the earliest Western that I really probably watched um, in reruns was Kung Fu. I know, it is a Western, you know, Grasshopper. And it was a great, it was a great little show. Um, I, I still have fond memories of Kung Fu. Um, the Lone Ranger was also on reruns. I saw that once or twice, but you know, I, I just never got into the Lone Ranger. As for movies and westerns, The Wild Bunch, of course. That's that's my go-to western. Um, I, I, I do like that one. I never watched really any of the older western movies. Um, I did see The Good, the Bad, and The Ugly, which, you know, kind of hokey, but that's okay. And then Clint Eastwood's um, Unforgiven. As for western novels, um, I really only started reading true genre westerns last year for June on the Range, even though I, I think I, I, I read a few. Um, I read something called The Gunman's Song by Ralph Cotton about 20 years ago. Um, that probably was my first western. There was something called by Al Sarranto. I, I should have written this down, but I don't remember. But I started really watch, reading the Western novels last year. And uh, do I have a favorite Western? That's hard to say. Um, if you're going for more literary Westerns, I would say the Oxbow Incident, um, Blood Meridian. And the Oxbow Incident is Van Tilburg Clark, Blood Meridian by Cormac McCarthy. As for the, again, uh, a Western novel I really like, Shane, that I read last year. It's a very short novel, um, very enjoyable, and it is a true Western. I also like the audio book of True Grit. That was also very enjoyable. Prompt number five, Diamond Lil at the Rialto Saloon. What is your relationship with alcohol? Ever had a friend with a bartender. Ever had a friend with a bar friendship with a bartender? Um, I do drink alcohol. When I go out to eat, I will almost always order a beer to go along with my meal, especially if the restaurant serves grass beer. Um, um, the, craft, the craft type of beer, not, not the Bud Light, no. Wouldn't drink that. Um, I also like tequila. Oh, I love taking some tequila, shot of tequila before I go to bed but I always wait till just before I'm ready to go to bed. So I have nothing else hindering me after I take that shot of tequila, because you know, when I say a shot of tequila, probably a double shot, maybe a triple, you know. But I don't always drink it every night. Um, I've cut back a lot of my drinking beer going out because beer has gotten really expensive since this inflation. I'm not going to pay eight bucks for just an ordinary beer. A craft beer on draft, yeah, I'll, I'll still consider that. But um, I've been cutting back a lot on the beers when I go out. Prompt number six, the city slicker from back east. What do you consider the best Western you've ever read? I just answered that in the previous one. I knew this question was here and I just mixed up the order. So you have to go back to prompt number four. Um, prompt number seven, the man with the badge. Have you ever been in charge of other people? What's the most authority you've ever handled? Would you be good at it? When I was a computer programmer, when I was still working, um, I used to have a task where I was basically importing, exporting data out of systems. And when the company merged, 
they reassigned me to um, helping pay doctors their bonus checks. And I had to um, have three underlings who were doing part of the research and data gathering, data gather, data gathering to give me, and I had to um, get it all together and serve it up to the senior accountant and the vice president. And um, yes, I was in charge of those other people, even though I did not have that in my job title. And um, they were not paying me for supervising and um, teaching these people how to program computers. I guess I did okay. I really did not like it. I did not like having to bear the responsibility for other people's work. Because um, when one employee made a mistake and I did not catch his mistake and I delivered it to the senior accountant and she said I was wrong, I got hit for delivering the bad data. They didn't want to hear about the guy under me I was sort of supervising who gave me the bad data. So, no, I did not like it. I would not volunteer to do that again. And I do not want to be in charge. Prompt number eight, the Tombstone Kid. Have you ever fired a gun? Been a gun aficionado? Been shot? Um, when we had the last elections here in the United States, they were predicting a red wave where the Republicans would take over the House and the Senate. And um, I was getting a little nervous. So a month, about two months before the election, I took a class on how to fire a handgun. You just look it up on the internet and enroll, pay your check, and you go to a one-day class. The class is about six hours long. You have about five hours of in-class instruction on how to handle a handgun. You then take a very easy test, and then you go to the range and fire a handgun. And um, once you fire your handgun and hit your target, you are given a certificate in Virginia that would allow me to conceal carry a pistol. I had never, never fired a pistol in my life before this class. I easily passed the test. I hit my target, which is about 10 yards away, which really anyone should be able to hit. So I am legally entitled to carry a concealed weapon if I take that certificate to the courthouse and pay a fee. I have not taken that certificate to the courthouse because I'm not really sure I want to carry a gun. Um, I did not particularly enjoy firing a gun. I don't anticipate that I would enjoy it if I had to continue to fire a gun. Because if I bought a gun with that concealed carry permit, which you actually don't need to buy the gun with the concealed carry permit, I would have to go train with that gun once a week, once every other week, maybe once a month. But I don't want to waste my time firing a gun. I do not find any pleasure in that. I do not think how useful a gun is. I think guns are extraordinarily dangerous. They have one purpose, to kill people. And the only reason you want to carry it is because you think people are going to kill you. Now, is a burglar going to kill me when they break into this house? I very much doubt that. I don't have anything really worth killing for or worth dying for in my house. I have my wife. I have my cats. Those are the only really important things. If a burglar wants my TV, you know, take my TV and go. I'm not going to shoot you over it. But if you have a, uh, let's say, a religious and political extremist who does not believe in the rule of law and wants to install their political party above others, especially if they don't have the votes, maybe I will need a gun. And that would be a disaster if I were concealed carrying a pistol, because I don't see any good coming out of that. Um, so no, I'm not a gun aficionado, and I have never been shot or shot at, at least yet. Prompt number nine, it ain't the bullet that gets you, it's the fall. How would you ideally like to cash in your chips? In the heat death of the universe. Wait it out, 
be the last one around and see the universe wink out. That'd be a good way to die. Other than that, um, in my sleep, preferably, non-painlessly, I don't want to go out with any sort of heroics. I don't want to think that um, Gregorio the outlaw was a great man defending his country or his non-religion or whatever. Just let me die in my sleep and not worry about it. Prompt number 10, tag some owl hoots. Well, a lot of people have been tagged in this already. I am going to tag two of my good buddies who I pretty sure have not been tagged and will be reading some Westerns. And that is Alan at Big Hard Books and Classics and Bad and Bad is Rad too. So I hope you partners find the time to do this tag and the rest of you, Thank you for watching and keep on reading.